because it's another time for us to gather. Somebody type in the comments, I know his name is wonderful. Everybody now, yeah. Hey, Miranda, this is my testimony. All of my life, I've never known you to fail. You remain the same man. Wonderful is your name. You remain the same man Wonderful is your name
whatever has been said in your hearing. You're privileged to know that this morning nobody had to push you in a wheelchair. Nobody had to carry you because your legs were not moving. Nobody is seen for you because you are blind. But you have the opportunity to use all the faculties and the senses that God had made you with. Even if they are not working at optimum, they are still working. You have the opportunity that many people do not have. And might I just ask you to do me one favor before we move on. Can you stand on those feet that God gave you that still works? Can you lift those hands that God gave you that can still be lifted? Can you open that mouth that God gave you that sounds can still come from? And will you give God glory? If you don't mind, can you just move a little bit on that feet? Assuming that the enemy is below you and you are trampling upon him with every foot that you lift and you put back on the ground that's the enemy's face and with your mouth you can say I am victorious will somebody give God glory in this room like you mean it hallelujah 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 everything might not be the way you want it but you are still breathing Everything might not be the way you desire it, but you are still alive. And I grew up in the old church with the old mothers that would have said something like this. Whilst there is life, I dare you to tell somebody right there. I dare you look at somebody and tell them, whilst there is life, there is hope. God bless you. You may be seated if you will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. That's a salutation from the old church. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. Brothers and sisters, I greet you in the holy, precious, and powerful name of Jesus Christ. It's the name that is above every name. And the writer puts it at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so I salute you in that saving name. God bless my father's children with you. Will you meet me in 1 Samuel chapter 13? 1 Samuel chapter 13. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 13. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 13. Brothers and sisters, we are stuck in Samuel. First Samuel chapter 13. We will read verses 2 and 3. 1 Samuel 13, verse 2 and 3. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel 13, verses 2 and 3. Hallelujah. First Samuel 13, verses 2 and 3. Saul throws him 3,000 of Israel. 2,000 were with Saul in Michmash and in the mouth Bethel. And 1,000 were with Jonathan in Gibeah of Benjamin. 
and the rest of the people he sent every man to his tent. And Jonathan smoth the garrison of the Philistine that was in Gibeah. And the Philistine heard and Saul blew the trumpet throughout the land saying, let the Hebrews hear. Verse 3. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that were in Gibe. And the Philistine heard. And Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land saying, let the Hebrews hear. Elder Brown, at the expense of being criticized, I will use for a theme this morning, the harder they come, the harder they fall. Father, I give you thanks for today. I thank you for your divine intervention and for your spirit. I come before you needing your touch. I need your strength. I come before you, Father, recognizing that I'm nothing save alone that you make me something. I come before you, Father God, recognizing how frail and foolish I am. But I thank you. You are a God of mercy and grace. And so I pray that you will have your way even now. As I stand before this sacred desk and around this, around this desk and before your people, I pray that you will speak to me and that you will cleanse me and use me for your glory. All honor belongs to you, Lord. We never cease to thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless my father's children. The harder they come, the harder they fall. I, 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 I need your prayers because um, I'm, I'm using a theme from a secular song and I know I can I, I can be criticized and, and I stand needed your help. In 1972, Jimmy Cliff, a Jamaican songwriter, wrote the song, The Harder They Come. And this particular song and its title was also cast in a movie The Harder They Come. Jimmy Cliff starred in this movie and in this movie Brother Craig he was a naive country boy who goes to town well watch this but later becomes a gangster. In the movie, he goes by the name Brother Samuel, Ivan Ho Martin. And it's funny because in the show, he was helping out at a local church. The show cast him Elder Brown. Watch this. Recording this very song. But according to the movie, he was ripped off by the producer. He ended up on the wrong side of the law. And now he died in a shootout with the police. There is a tension with this particular title and the intent of what it is that Jimmy Cliff, I believe, wanted. Because he was suggesting in the song, watch this, no matter how hard life can be, you can still succeed. Amen. And maybe this I wanted to tell somebody right now. It doesn't matter how hard life can be. Tell somebody, you can still succeed. succeed. I, I don't think somebody gets it because there is somebody need to hear it for the third time because what they are going through, it seems to be tumultuous. But for, for the third time, I wanted to tell somebody, it doesn't matter how hard life can be. You can still succeed. 
Brothers and sisters, I'm not sure if I'm the only one that is viewing this. But the enemy continues to intensify his work. Elder Brown seemingly without any fear. The enemy seems to be moving closer and closer. Watch this. To capturing the people of God. And I've come to find out, brothers and sisters, that the only way this can be achieved is if we do nothing about it. So let me see if I can perplex your spirit. The new banknotes are out. Tell somebody the new notes are out. The new monies are out. And I'm not sure how much you are enjoying spending it. Elder Brown, again, it might be registered to be conspiracy theory. But, 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 but since I am a Jamaican, I live here and I have to deal with things here. Might as well I do my investigations. Because we have been experiencing a series of things being played out in our country. It has been theorized by those who have done the check that the new banknotes that we have are symbolism of something. The very thing that many of us are arguing about. Amen. I've got it on social media. I've, I've, I've seen it. It's been shown to me. And I've also shown it to people. That in the notes, the color of the rainbow is being pronounced. And again, by the law, it could be conspiracy. It could, it, could, it, could, it could be, nothing might not be to it, Brother, brother, brother Samuel. But here it is. The bank notes, Elder Brown, are six notes. They came out in the sixth month. And they are six colors. I, I, I don't know. It could, it could be conspiracy. It, it, I mean, the, the church, please. It could mean nothing. It, 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 it could be nothing. But, but, but allow me, allow me, Brother Samuel. If, if I'm an investigator. So then, if I'm investigating something, Elder Brown, I'm not going to leave anything out. I need, I need to get all the information so that I can put them together and then come to a conclusion. But, 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 but I, please, please forgive me because I'm forced to even go a little bit deeper. Every note has two persons on it. And I, I, I please forgive me, Brother Samuel, but, 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 but two men are on most of the notes and two women. You, you still miss it? All right, watch this. You, 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 there's something that you miss in it. The, the point I'm trying to make is why did we do that? I would have hoped you put a man and a woman on the note, but you put two men. All right, listen, me, listen, please, 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 please forgive me because maybe there's nothing to it. But, but, but as an investigator, I will have to look at everything. Everything that might be considered to be foolish to you, I will have to look at it to then come to a conclusion to then determine. But, but, but it's all too suspicious. Until I get any more evidence before I will believe that there is nothing to it. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that we fail to see as Christians is that we fail to recognize how strategic the enemy is. 
And one of the things that I've, I've come to find out about Christendom, and especially many of us in apostolic church, we tend to use the word wisdom. We tend to say, Pastor, it, I, I don't think it is wise that we would have taken that approach because we, I, I don't think it's really wise because I, I don't think the, 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 the Lord would want to. I don't think it is. And, 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 and when, we, when we began to suggest in this context, we are then finding excuses not to come forward Amen. in order to stamp our disapproval of the things that might be happening. Please allow me. I, I, allow me real quick, just before we get into 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 the the, 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 the the text, to remind us about the men of old in the Bible. We had some examples, Elder Brown, that we are missing, and there were some men of old in our scriptures that they were not afraid to stand up against the authorities. And declare thus said the Lord, even at the expense of being criticized and being ostracized. Because when you stand upon the word of God, can I suggest to you, when you and I decide to do this in the way that it really ought to be done, people will believe that we are overboard. Uh, all right, uh, thank you. Thank you for the one. Amen, Lady Freedom. People will believe that you're overboard because it doesn't take all of that. We don't have to do all of that. But I want you to realize, brother, and sister, the only way cruelty and the men who perpetrate injustice can continue the way they are doing it is if. Those who God has placed, what is among them, what is to be the salt and the light. We let the people know that we are not dead, but we are still alive. And we still say, thus said the Lord. So, I want to find an army of people who will not just be looking from the sideline, but make your voices heard. Amen. Brother and gentlemen, where we are in the text, brothers and sisters, if you remember where we left off. In chapter 11, there was a fight with Israel and the Ammonites. They got the victory. In chapter 12, Samuel Try to remind the people that they need to recognize that it is God over kings. How we narrow it down as we spoke last Sunday, it would have been the church over the state. It is suggesting, brothers and sisters, that God should still be recognized even when the state, watch this, seems to be progressing in the things that they are doing. Amen. What's this? When we ended chapter 12, we would have seen that Samuel called thunder and rain from heaven. Amen. And the rain and the thunder was so heavy. The fear came on the people. And the Bible said the people caught their fear and asked Samuel to pray for them. And Samuel said, don't be afraid. Because this is it. If what is, even though you have been foolish in what you did, if you will call on God, if you will surrender, God will relent. Ladies and gentlemen, we just ended a week in our country where the, what is, where the justice of the peace, the custos of Jamaica, what's this? The governor general, they ask for a day of mourning, Elder Brown. It hurts me. Can I tell you why it messes me up, Missionary Smith? We don't need a day to mourn. Oh, God Almighty. We need a day to repent. Too many mourning without repentance. Y'all not going to like me. I'm going to preach this thing real hard. Because what is, what is, you mourn doesn't mean that you are sorry. You mourn because you lost somebody. God Almighty, but you never mourn because you are sorry for what has been happening. You're only mourning for what has happened to you. 
and we live in a country, watch this, it's easy, watch this, to talk about mourning, but it's difficult for us to face what needs to be done as it relates to repentance. And too many of us want God to show up on our behalf and we are not repenting. Because repenting suggests that you and I are going to change from what we did previously and now do what needs to be done. Can I preach it like I feel it? Because after you are through praying, talking about your mourning, you don't what is you are the same person. I'm in the wrong church. Because what is the prime minister has not changed. Why? Because it was nothing about repentance. It was only about mourning. The customs has not changed. The governor general has not changed. The parliamentarian has not changed. Even though they met, met, might have met in a certain place. Talking about we are sick and tired of all this kind of crime and violence. They have not repented. And the last time I checked the text in 2 Chronicles 7 40. If my people. Oh God almighty. Who are called by my name. What's this? Humble themself and pray seek my face what is turn from the week then I'll hear and you want God to hear from heaven and all you did was mourning and I'm in a LeBron I'm in a group several church groups of apostolic leaders and they are promoting mourning and not repentance. But the devil is a liar. Because what we have failed to realize in is that until we have come to realize that God is God and he ought to be worshipped as God, we will always have the same thing to deal with. Ladies and gentlemen, when you look at the ending of chapter 12, this is how I coined it. Because after Israel decided to ignore God, when God should have destroyed them, what's this? His love restrained his judgment. And instead he killed them. Look what he did. He gave them another chance. No, you, 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 you miss it later than because brother Lo, I never said that he gave them, what's this? I didn't say that he gave them a second chance. I said that he gave them a what? So, so I, 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 I never said that he gave them, what's this? A, a second chance. But I said he gave them a because there are some of us in this room you have exceeded your second chances. I'm in the wrong church. I don't want, I said, you have exceeded your second chance. And you need to lean over and say, neighbor, I'm not on a second chance right here. I'm on another. I, I, wish, I, was, I wish I had a real church to preach this thing to. You think that God gave you a second chance? No. Right now, he... I wish... You are on another because you have exceeded... Bible says, what's this? Saul, here, Elder Brown, Saul choose 3,000 men. These 3,000 men, might I suggest to you, they would be warriors. Now, I got to give you the backdrop of this story because if you would have noticed that when it is in chapter 11, that when Saul went up against the Ammonites, there were no men of war. Can I preach you? Israel had no men of war. Somebody missed the text. They had no men of war. They only had farmers. God Almighty. They only had some people. But what's it? The text says that when the Spirit of God came up and saw us, what's it? He called the people together. And we found 330,000 men who went up to battle. Watch this. And they won against the Ammonite preacher. What are you saying? I'm seeing where God gave victory to farmers and not soldiers. I'm in the wrong. 
I got to try because somebody missed it. I'm saying I'm seeing where God gave victory. Watch this. He gave the victory to farmers against soldiers because when God stand with you, you don't have to have any star or pip on your shoulder. You don't have to have a title. You don't need to wear a collar. When God stand with you, you can be an ordinary brother in the background of where you live, but God will unctionize you to win a battle against those who have been warring long time against you. They never had an army. They were only farmers. My God. But God said I can use a farmer to win against experienced soldiers. Preacher, why are you preaching like this? Because I want the people of God to recognize when you look and listen to what's happening in your country and you have the nerve to say that you can make a difference because you're only just one. The devil is a liar. You need to know you are that one that needs to be with that one, with that one, with that one, with that one. And when all the ones come together, can I preach to somebody? When the ones come together, they can make thousands and they can make millions. They were never warriors. They were farmers. But God gave them the victory. Saul at this point in chapter 13 chose 3,000 men. Let me suggest you because the text teaches us that with these feet of the men, Saul took 2,000 for himself. And he gave 1,000 to his son, Jonathan. Now you will realize, based upon sacred text, that some time has passed. So now we are looking at King Saul. Watch this. He now has the leadership of Israel, but being guided by Samuel. Where we are in sacred texts, we never found Samuel in the immediate location where he was. Samuel and Saul, they were not in the same location. We can't preach everything. But what we do know is that what is Saul has 2,000 men. Might I suggest to you that these 2,000 men might have been his bodyguards. And he gave 1,000 men, what's this, to his son. What's this, Jonathan. So the Bible now teaches us that with these men, we found then that Jonathan was in a place called Gibeah. Now, Gibeah, ladies and gentlemen, is what is, is the very location where we found Saul earlier in chapter 11, where it is that he was plowing. So it was the region where the Benjamites are living. So, but within this area, ladies and gentlemen, as they would have congregated in this area, the Bible now was to flip the script. And when we get to verse 3, the Bible said, and Jonathan Smoth, the garrison. What we need to understand since the fight of the Ammonites, we didn't hear of the Ammonites coming again. Because the beaten down that the Ammonite got, they still beat. Let me try it because the church still miss it. I said, the beat of the Ammonite, they stay the beat. No, no, what's this? I, I, I got to remind you, because what's this? The king amongst the Ammonite, his name was Nahash. And for those of you who kept coming to church and Bible class, you'd have recognized who Nahash was. Because when you look at the book of Genesis chapter 3, you look to and see well that Nahash is a serpent. Somebody missed the text. The word Nahash suggests a serpent. So what's this? So what's this? Nahash came in the form of a serpent. Or the serpent came in the form of a man. And he came up at what's this? Leading an army against what is Israel. But God gave the victory over Israel. Somebody missed it. God gave the victory to Israel. Still missing. In other words, the serpent that we found in Genesis 3. What's this? He tried to reincarnate himself. And he show up again, what's this, what's this amongst the people of God. But he has been defeated. And I come to tell everybody, because the Holy Ghost told me to tell you, there are people operating with the spirit of serpent. 
I wish I had a real church because the spirit of the serpent is that they will sting you and when they bite they will leave venom that is poisonous but lean them and say neighbor you got the victory over every serpent my God Almighty, we have not yet even reached in the New Testament, but God gave us the victory in the Old Testament. You still missed it. What the declaration was this that when God visited Eve, what's it in the New Old Testament? He said, What's it? He said to her, He said, What's it? He said, The serpent will be able to bruise the heel of your child, but your child will be able to crush his head somebody miss it because God have already declared that you will have the authority even though you will be attacked you will have the you miss what I just said I said even though you will be attacked you see I can't tell you that you're not going to be attacked but one thing I can guarantee the people of God lead us in neighbor is a victory I wish I had a real church. I said, you will be attacked. You shall be attacked. And watch this, maybe once, maybe twice, maybe every day of your life. But can I tell you what you are guaranteed? You are guaranteed a win. Lean over and say, neighbor, you are guaranteed a win. My God. I don't know in whatever year of your life you're going to have that attack. It could be in your finance. It could be in your job. It could be in your relationship. It could be in your family. Can I also preach it like this? It could be in your body. But you shall have the victory. Will you lean over and say, neighbor, you shall be victorious. I don't know, maybe the enemy is trying to mess up your mind. But you shall. Will you declare it to somebody? Let them hear it not just in their ear because the preacher preach it but if you're sitting beside somebody will you tell them you shall have the victory so what's this they crushed the serpent and now we have the Philistine The Philistine come back again. Because there are some enemies, they are perennial. You have heard me use that word. If you've been coming to church, you have heard me use that word several times. That there are some enemies. They are perennial. They always come back. God Almighty. It gives you a season, but it comes back. All right, y'all gonna come and swing. There are some feelings Hallelujah. that always. I wish I could preach to the real church. Why well, look like I'm preaching to false folk? There are some things that will always come back. When you get the victory over it today, it show up again. And you get two months victory, it come the third month. You get six months, and it come, I wish I had a real church. And it come, and can I preach it like I feel it? You get one year Elder Brown reprieve, and before you know it, it shows up. Here is the Philistine. The last time we saw them, we crushed even their gods. But the enemy has regrouped. I want you to know what it is that we might be singing, shouting, and enjoying what we eat. And maybe want to go home now because you've heard enough. You need to understand there's some enemies that are regrouping. Mm -hmm. I know some of you would, would love to check out, but you don't even realize there's some enemies that are regrouping. I don't know what they're coming for, but some enemies are regrouping. And, and I, 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 let me just tell it to you like this. You have heard me say it oftentimes, that you will never have a fight if there's nothing to lose or something to gain. Because if you are being attacked by the enemy, it means there's something valuable that you have that the enemy wants. Have you ever heard of wealth of war? Because the enemy is not going to fight you unless there is something to gain. 
I'm in the wrong church. Look at this ever say, yeah, me, yeah. There's something about your life that the enemy keeps coming back because the enemy wants you so much. Because there is a value that has been placed on your life. And you don't even recognize the influence and the purpose you have. So you get over it today and it gives you two days, but it show up again. Watch this some days afterwards because the enemy will realize if I keep leaning on it it will someday topple over I wish I could preach because what the enemy does he doesn't want to keep on leaning so that one of these days you will just I wish I was preaching to the real church he keep pressing on you because his expectation is one of these days you stop pushing what is you stop putting up a defense and then capitulate but I come to preach to somebody who will hear this preacher this Sunday stand up in respect of whatever push you might be getting from that devil hold on lean over to neighbor hold on a little while longer there are some of us we have it minutes in and minutes out because we stand as a defense for our family and unless the enemy gets us out he can't get to the family so I keep on leaning trying to force you to capitulate but I dare tell the church stand up and do not quit Brother Law, the text says there is a garrison. You know what a garrison is? Minister Smith, a garrison is a military base. Brother Dave, a garrison is a military base. No, but the law, when I did an inquest on the word garrison, Deacon Taylor, I found out it was not just a military base, but it was a permanent base. Somebody missed the text, somebody knows what I just said. <laughs> they are not just passing through. They have showed up, they have encamped. I'm in the wrong church. Elder Brown, it declares that a garrison, what's this, is a permanent military base. Base. So, all right, somebody, let me try this side. A permanent military. The enemy, what is, is not just passing through preacher, but the enemy comes and he set up his camp. He said, I'm here to stay. I'm in the wrong church. Because the reason why you're having so much hell that you haven't gotten over yet is not that the enemy is passing through, the enemy has set up. God Almighty, the enemy set up an encampment. God Almighty, later further, I thought it was only going to be a feeling that passed over in the night. But tomorrow morning, the very thing lingers. Why? Because it is a stronghold, it is a permanent beast. What do you do when the enemy has set up encampments that are permanent at your residence? He was in the era of Gibeah. Can I preach to you? Because the word Philistine means immigrant. Preacher, break that down. It means I'm a foreigner. God Almighty, him not belong there. Can I preach it like a feeling? There are some things that have showed up in your family life that do not. God Almighty, they don't belong there. They, what is, they camouflage themselves like they're a part of your family, but they are not a part of it. They have hidden themselves as if they have been an assignment by God, but they are an assignment of the enemy. The preacher man, what's it? A Philistine is an immigrant in a foreigner. What is the foreigner doing and coaching on your property? And what are you going to do about it? What is if you read the text carefully and you do an inquest, you'd have realized that the Philistine has been there a while. And we haven't heard Saul at this point call the war to move them up. But watch this because there's something you found. When we saw the Ammonites in chapter 11, they have already declared what they came to do. But when we saw the Philistine in chapter 13, they ain't saying nothing. But you got to understand how strategic the enemy is. The Ammonites already declared what their plans were. But the Philistines only show up 
and hold off a piece of your property and he ain't saying nothing but one thing the enemy is suggesting Elder Brown the enemy is saying if you not touch me me not touch you the enemy said, well, and if you allow me to stay here, so everything is going to be all right. I wish I could preach. Because what the enemy wants you to do is to share space with him. But you need to walk through your house and tell every demon, me, are you not? I'm in the wrong church. You and I ain't going to, sh- we're not sharing no- you, you, know, you know, like come here, I preach. Me not share no space with you. You are foreigner. You not belong in there. So where is your ear paper? Can I preach it? You want a part of me family? You know how me last name? You not supposed to in me house? God Almighty, church, you know, like come here, I preach. You have to walk through us. I ask the demon, show me your ear paper. See me mark penny. God Almighty, Louis mark penny. God, I mean. Newell my penny, Hardy my penny, God Almighty, watch this, if you know how your last name, tell him to your God. I'm going to preach so hard in the church, people who find me so, God Almighty. <laughs> what I saw, with the Lord, is what I call a soft suggestion. Watch the text. The enemy has not said anything, but he's suggesting. Because since he comes in your territory and sets up something, it means he's suggesting. He has not said it in so many words, God Almighty. But since the base is permanent, church people now hear me. I mean, he, he is softly suggesting that I'm here to stay. My God Almighty, I'm in the wrong church. And what do you do when you realize that they be sharing space with demons? God, you know, like when I preach. What do you do when you realize that in things get better in the house, it progressively get worse? You know, realize say, you are sharing space. Church people are like, oh preacher. God Almighty, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to talk about your use wisdom? Are you going to put on your Holy Ghost prophetic anointing? I came from the old church because my mother used to walk through the bed and touch me when me and I'm in deep sleep. I said, boy, you think you're going to be no good man? Boy, you think you're going to be no night? God Almighty, me in the wrong church, I preach. Church people don't like me. My mother never keep her mouth closed. I have hopes it happen, but should have walked through, waiting up in the middle of the night. I said, prior time. Why? Because she saw something impending. And she was telling every demon before you touch them, have you got to me? You see, me not find that I want to lie that again in the church, you know, because I want to want to sleep, I want to enjoy the soap opera, and on the internet and social media. I don't have no time to get up and walk in the house and tell demons to take it back door before me. I'm not in the wrong church. But the Bible says that Jonathan, I need somebody to move with the spirit of Jonathan. My God, because when father now fight, son say me feel fighting on my bone. God Almighty, I'm in the wrong church. Jonathan, lay the freighter. The text in verse 3 says, Jonathan Smoth. Because when Jonathan realized that where he was at, was infested by Philistines. God Almighty. Immigrants. They have no legal title to your place, Cutty. God Almighty. <laughs> Mister, they have no legal title. Hold on. The only way, watch this. The only way, the only way, the only way, and it's biblical, the only way any demon can actually stay in your premises is unless they get legal permission. To operate there. Amen. Wrong church. Hallelujah. Wrong church. That's the only way a demon can resist. I'm 
sorry to go. You might not express it, but I see it. Anybody with the eye to see, you might not say it, but I... You see, the, the thing is this, you don't even realize that we're not fighting flesh and blood. You don't realize that the flesh and blood we are fighting. You know, a deep God Almighty, church in the and the flesh and blood they can deal the church and miss it that's why we are get captured because we are looking for flesh and blood we are arguing because what is the enemy allows us to be arguing among ourselves whilst he's making an inroad you still miss it, you still miss it. Because what the enemy does, he creates distractions. And when he creates a distraction, are you focusing on this? This is what is working on the inside. But if you step away from the distraction, if you can't step away from it, you will never be able to see what's being done. And they will have us distracted. So we're disliking and having issues whilst he's working his way in to destroy what's happening. But Jonathan the Bible said, he smiled the garrison. Can I preach to you? Because when you read the text and you do an inquest, the word garrison suggests a strong and a firm wall. The word garrison suggests a pillar which means if it is a pillar, if it is a mountain it means you got some roots. God Almighty, I'm in the wrong church. What's this? You are building a preacher, man. And before you can put a structure on it, you got to put something down in there. So when the enemy come to believe, say, no, no, don't, God Almighty. I'm in the wrong church. He had to have a foundation before he can wrong church, before he can build on it. And what we miss is we are seeing the foundation, what we are seeing the building, and not dealing with the but you have to get to the foundation. The text says, Elder, this is a pillar. It is a wall. And it suggests there is a foundation. Some digging and some casting took place before you actually saw, see the structure that is on the outside. And you need to let every demons know. I don't care where it come from, but I dare you get a Holy Ghost bulldozer, God Almighty. Me not the wrong church now. Because see, me not only take off the top, lead up as a dig up everything. I'm in the wrong church. Only a few worshipers we have today, no matter Craig. God Almighty. But if you tell the demons, say, me not lick off the top, God Almighty. Me have to dig up. I want somebody to get the Holy Spirit, no man, and get something like I want to fart, no. Throw it down in the ground, no. Get a pickup, no man. Get something, no. Get in the Spirit, get something. Because you want to get to the... Because the higher the foundation, the higher the structure, is the deeper you need the foundation. And there's some foundation, and they're just two black height. God Almighty. Some of them are four black height, five black height, because the enemy planned to make it tall. But I come to preach to a church that we realize in this season, it doesn't matter how deep it is, it has to be dug up. Because the Bible says that Jonathan, he smut the garrison, lead over, say, him tear it down, him tear it up, him mash it down, him mash it up, because I'm not care what it is. Lead I see the baby half in my shop. God Almighty, the wrong church. When we can church people and I preach with the preacher, lean by your neighbor, no man. I say we have him mash it up. You, you, you see, what's this? The Bible says he smuts the garrison, the garrison of the Philistine at Gebe. Because what the Philistine does, they took the hill. God Almighty. You say, we want to look to the hill. So the enemy took the hill. Yeah. Wrong, wrong church. I'm trying to find a church. Yeah. You say, the enemy wants us to keep our head in the sand. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find somewhere to stop. So, because what, there are many of us, we can't look up and look out. We have to walk with our heads down. Because the enemy wants us to be so embarrassed that we can't look up. We have to be looking down. So the enemy took the hill. God Almighty. Because every time you look up, 
Every time you look up, you'd have seen him. And then the problem is this because you can't be able to see him. You have to walk with it, but the devil is alive. Jesus of mercy because the enemy wants the hilly place because there's something about the hills because when you're on the hills you can get a bird's eye view of everything that's happening and the enemy took the view elder brown where he can look at everything concerning your relationship concerning your church concerning your job concerning your life and I preach it like I feel it he put himself at a strategic place so that everything is within his view and so that he has an opportunity to do what he wants to do but I come to preach to a people who are decided on today that I'm going to stand upon the word of God you see this is not for everybody but it's for those that will believe God you see I'm a believer I'm trusting on the word of God because if it had not been for the Lord that is on my side where, can I tell you where I would have been I would have been at Cayman as if the Maroon race today I would have been out of the go go club I look for the brown and all the black men you know like me preach I would be at the rum bar and if not at the rum bar at home rumming out and whining out wrong church God Recording stop. if it had not been for God maybe I would have lost my mind and eaten out of a garbage bin if it had not been for God I maybe would be a beggar and a pauper on the street what is homeless and nothing less but God is there anybody in the church you want to preach this Sunday and let the devil know you have come this far recording in progress every push the enemy push me I lead every press the enemy press me I lead on the Lord trusting in his holy word he never fail lean over and say neighbor he never God Almighty I'm in the wrong church he may not come when I want him but he's always on time he is an on time God tell somebody yes he is is there anybody this Sunday you want to throw your hand in here I said yeah he is an on time Yes, he is. He's an on time. I got to go. What's this? I got to go. No, a garrison, a garrison normally has no less than 500 soldiers. No, with the 1,000 men that Jonathan has, remember, I've already explained to you, they have not gotten any military training. They were picked from a farming community. God Almighty. But I'm seeing this season where God is making an army. I said God is making an army. There are some warriors that refuse to fight but God say I'm making an army. I'm making an army with some people who don't have certain people experiences. He said, I'm making an army of some people that don't have your military might. He said, I'm making an army of some people. What's this that I've never been trusted by you, but trusted by me. Because what God needs in this season is to find a people who will trust him. A people who will dedicate their life to him. And if they will, then he'll make an army out of them because if the enemy think that he's going to set up anymore what's this garrison at your facility that devil needs to know that inside of my house I might not have anybody that had graduated from the Jamaica military I might not have nobody who gets special assignment in Iraq I don't have nobody who had gone to Sudan I get no special training they've never been in the police force in any elite team but one thing I can tell you that when we start pray God Almighty when we get down on our knees mix with fire Fasting and prayer. You miss what I 
just, I said, when we get down on our knees, meddle with fasting and prayer. When we get down on our knees, meddle with fasting and prayer. And in our prayer, we are repent. And we are tell God for truth. Say, we know, Lord have mercy, help me. We say, he will show up. Can I preach it like I feel it? Because the Bible said, he smote the garrison. Because there is no stronghold that can stand up to the power of God. I don't know what you're going through, but I come to tell you that the harder the enemy comes, lean over the harder that enemy is going to fall. Can I preach it like I feel it? Because for every giant that will come, they need to know to have a great fall. Don't push back. Don't surrender. Don't quit. Even when you don't feel like still do it. Even when you're not happy, may say, still do it. God Almighty, I come to preach to some, I'm trying to close. Who will realize that in this season, you have to have fire on you. You have to have something that keep you warm. You can't afford to get cool. You can't afford to wrong church. Because you can't afford to get warm, cool on them Caesar. Because in a them seeds at the moment to get cool, you've been rolled over by the adversary, and before you know it, you would have lost the battle. But I dare somebody this Sunday, I'm trying to close, lean over and send him. I make it a point of my duty to put up a sign on my house to tell that demon is on my door. The harder you come. Is the harder you're going to fall. Can I preach it? Because I am not going to surrender. So if you're coming with sickness, the harder you come, and the harder you're going to fall. If you want to mess with me money, me say the harder you come, and the harder you're going to fall. You want to mess with me family, God Almighty, the harder you come. I'm in the wrong church because Elder Brown, when you see us in the man, if the enemy touch a button, you need to let him know and say the wrong button him touch. And you need to bring the war, God Almighty. There's an unction upon my life because the enemy mess with where I shouldn't mess with. And you realize that when you touch me, family, you touch me. Jesus have mercy. And God give me a kind of unction that me not afraid of nothing. Because when the anointing come upon my life, I will respect respectfully say Mr. Prime Minister God Almighty you only have power over the parliament but I have a connection with God that have power over the heavens Jesus of mercy and the last time I checked the scripture told me that when Jesus was on the cross he could have called no, under 10,000 alone, you could have called legions of angels. You see, you are limiting to 10,000. I mean, I have no limit on it because the God whom I serve, can I preach it like this, Pastor Lua? He has power more than, of more than, more than 10,000. He has power over all legions, God Almighty. So no limit me, God, and put him to only 10,000. I serve a God who has power over legions and if he call they will show up I might not be a fighter but when the spirit of God came upon my heart I'll fight like God Almighty me the wrong church I'll fight like David fight when the spirit of the Lord come upon my life I'll fight like Joshua fight when the spirit of the Lord come upon my heart I'll fight God Almighty. Sometimes you find me, me weak like anything. But there's another season when the Spirit of the Lord come upon my heart. God Almighty. I'll fight. Jesus. And in this season, I'm here to tell the church, now back up. The harder they come. This is the season where you can't afford to get easy. I mean, I stay up on the sideline. I mean, I go, I mean, I go allow, I mean, I get no aid, I no option. Strike it while it's hot. So the text teaches us that Jonathan, he smuffed the garrison. A 
of the Philistine. He goes right up into their stronghold. Yeah. And he says, I'm taking back my territory. Yeah. He says, I'm taking back my territory. He said, I'm taking back. You got to do an assessment of your territory. You got to do an inventory of your territory. You see, some of us can't do it like some of us, you know. But if you take a, you, you, you got to do an inventory of your territory. Because the easiest way to take something from you is to remove your landmark. And many of us, the landmark move. The peg shift. You know, things, things out of line. But guess what happened, brother? I called for the spiritual surveyors. Start measure up. In other words, can I put it like this? There need to be a re-measurement. You got to do a resurvey. Shanabaka yeah. Sandai. I I I know I might be preaching too hard to some folk can't handle it. But you have to do a a, a new survey because the enemy is getting closer. And and I and I believe in the spirit. He has crossed over the boundary line. Shanabaka Sandai. The enemy has crossed over the boundary line. And you need to let that enemy know that I your boundary this year. You know I hear nothing. I see you need to tell the demons that you are crossed over the boundary line. You are now encroaching on my and because you are crouching my territory. You need to know that trespassers I'm in the wrong church. I don't want to preach with me. Trespassers shall be prosecuted. I'm going to close. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 says for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh hence the weapon of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds listen to this verse 5 casting down it starts from the imagination. Not, watch this. It's not the action. Somebody missed it. It starts with the imagination, not the action. Casting down imagination. And every, not some, but every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. But I like what verse 6 said, Minister Smith. 2 Corinthians 10, 6. He said, after you do that, you know, having the readiness what's this? To revenge. If I could preach like this, I'll tell the people of God. You see, when we start out, what is when we have full knowledge of verse 3 to 5, and we have acted upon verse 3 to 5, then we are ready in verse 6. Because verse 6 is suggesting that because we are processed ourselves from verse 3 to verse 5, he said, No, and having now the readiness to revenge all disobedience. When your obedience is fulfilled. So when it is that you and I have now allowed ourselves to be measured and to be processed by the word of God, we are now ready to revenge. And if I could give this message a subtitle, I'll subtitle it revenge. Because this is where we must launch an attack. This is not where the church remains on the defensive. But this is where the church moves in the offensive. And the offensive church is the attacking church. 
The defensive church is a backing up church. I'm in the wrong church. I said an attacking church is an offensive church. But a defensive church is a backing up church. And in this season, there is no backing up for the church. In this season, it's a church moving forward. Moses, en route to the promised land, saw Pharaoh coming. And he has mountain on either side. And he started crying. He said, God, watch this. If they had somewhere to run to, they would have ran. Can I say it again? Moses on his way to the promised land. Had Pharaoh in the back. He has mountain on either side. But the Red Sea was in front. If they had anywhere to run, they would have ran there. Oh, God Almighty. But better Craig, the text said because they couldn't run. They were out of option. Moses now said, God, what am I going to do? And God said, what do you have in your hand? You see how rad is a stretch it. Preacher, why do you allude to that story? I want to tell the church, forward still. It's Jehovah's will. I don't know what kind of billows you deal with, but though the billows dash and spray with a conquering thread, we'll push ahead. I will roll that sea away. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what the attack is on your life. Lord, I know there are some things. I don't know how many they are, but I know that there are some Philistines. Brothers and sisters, I can't tell in what formation they have come, but I do know that they don't come to make friends. I said, what I do, what is, what is, I do know that they don't like you. What I can tell you that a stronghold has been built and it has to be torn down. What are you going to do about it? Will you stand church? Stand with me. You're getting ready to go. I don't know where they are. Where they're coming from. But the enemy have a way of disguising himself. In even ways that is not easily or readily seen. But I told you when I began that as an investigator. Everything is important. The slightest of detail. Is important to an investigation. Every information needs to be gathered. And when you have gotten all that information and you put them together, you check them against facts to see how it is that they come up. But nothing should be ignored. I'm speaking to a people. Stop ignoring small details. Because that small details that you ignore could be the very thing that the enemy uses to tear everything down. But then on this Sunday as we get ready to pray, I want the people of God to know there's a war going on. I got to say it one more time. There's a war going on. The enemy might have not yet sent a bow or rather an arrow into your camp, but there's a war going on. Hallelujah. Because I told about the soft suggestion of the enemy. You see, as long as Israel remain where they are and do nothing, the Philistine is okay with them. And that's what the enemy wants you to do. The enemy wants you to see it, hear it, 
know about it and do nothing. Because if you do nothing, watch this, you and the enemy will be friends. And then everybody will be able to live happily. You can't live happy with demons. And there are some things that we are trying, claiming that we keep in the peace that we know though. You're being foolish. There has to be a war. There has to be a war. But we're not warring against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers. We are warring, brothers and sisters, on our knees. We repent. We seek the face of God. We fast. We set aside our time, our energy to meet, to have an encounter with God so that he can show up when it is that we stand out there. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl that will be serious about this mission, victory is guaranteed. But the victory is not just for you, but for everybody that is under your covering. Victory is guaranteed. I come, brothers and sisters, to build an army. I come to let the people of God know this is not the season where we hold back, but it's the season where we move forward. Take the enemy by surprise. The enemy never knew that Jonathan was coming because what's this? He ne what's this? He never saw no alarm, but he took them by surprise. God Almighty, and I want the church to take the enemy by surprise and let that enemy knows that they are losing because God is on your side. Wherever you're standing, throw that hand in the air, open your mouth, and begin to give your God glory. Hallelujah. Wherever you are hearing me right now, in your home, in your car, at work, wherever you are, right now, throw that hand in the air. You want God to show up. You're not in the sacred space. Nobody's seen you. Go to your bathroom if there's anybody in your home that you do not want them to see how it is you're expressing yourself. Excuse yourself from where they are, but you need to get the victory. And there's no need for you to be cute when it is that you're going through something that the person who you don't want to see you can't help you. They can only allow you a feel-good moment, but they really can't give you deliverance, need or a breakthrough. So then you need to excuse yourself if you're not brave enough to do it in their presence. But you got to give God what he deserves right there. And with that hand in the air, you need to know well enough that you need to be recommitting your life to him. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. And in your presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all because I need all. I'm not surrendering half. I need all. I want a, I want a holistic victory. So then I've got to give God everything. And wherever you are right now, I need you to realize that if you trust God, he's coming through for you. Whatever burden you're carrying, whatever pain you're feeling, whatever challenge you are experiencing, whatever obstacle you have in front of you, whatever hill you got to climb, I need you to know that you have the help of God. I said you got the help of God. You're not in it by yourself. It never looked like it for the Hebrew boys. It never looked like it for, for Daniel. But he was there. Should I remind you? Three young men were thrown in a fiery furnace that were unusually heated. And the king said, didn't we throw three? We see a fourth one. He must be the son of God. I see I have more evidence. You heard it before, but I'll tell you again. Daniel in the lion's den. 
in a den of lions, hungry lions that should be punishing him. He was thrown in that den. But the lions never even touched him. Because God was in it with him. Yeah, David survived the javelin of Saul. Yeah, he survived the onslaught of Goliath. Yes, he did. Samson succeeded with the jawbone of an ass. And in this season, you have the Holy Spirit indwelling in you. You are so victorious more than you could ever imagine. And I'm seeing God coming through for somebody right now. Your finance has been touched. I said your finance has been touched. Your store basket has been touched. Yeah, I want you to know. I want you to know that every detail of your life is important to God. Only trust Him. Only trust Him. He will come through for you because that's the God whom He is. Hallelujah. Come on, I surrender all. Sing it. I surrender all. Is there somebody here today as we get ready to go? I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all one more time. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee. All Presenting you at the altar and then pray our closing prayer. In Jesus' name. All to thee. All to thee, my, my blessed Savior. Savior. I Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your servant who has declared your word. Lord, truly, we have allowed the enemy to cross the border. I have allowed him to cross, God. Father, forgive me of all my sins and all my iniquity. Cleanse me this day, God. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your servant. Come to bless him, cover him, keep him, and preserve him. Strengthen him right now, Father. Lord, everyone who has come forward, you know the situation, the condition. But we thank you. As your word declared, the order they come, the order they fall. And so, God, as there is a revenge, God. Lord, today we surrender the fight in your hand. And so today, God, we're going to repent. But we're going to worship you, God. We're going to praise you, Lord God. Because vengeance is mine. I repay the sick, God. We thank you for your word, God. You said, oh God, you said that one plants. The other water, but the increase comes from you. And so today, God, we're not allowed division, God Almighty, to prevent us from 
gathering the army of God to tear down the kingdom of the enemy or the territories. You see, the garrisons, God, the literal garrisons in our country. Because the men and women of God fail to come together. They are garrisons. Not only in the community, but even in our house. The enemy has infiltrated God and caused serious issues, God. Serious hurt. And as a result, there are pain and agony right short. Our children have been feeling the hurt, the pain. But we repent today, God, of our sin. Repent of our lukewarmness, God. God. Repent, God Almighty, of the pretense of everything that is false. Oh God, everything that's a lie in our lives, God. We repent of the corruption, the filthiness this day, God. We turn from our evil, corrupt, nasty ways, God. Forgive us uh, because we have sinned and we have come short uh, of your glory. But we ask so uh, your mercies to be extended. And so today, God, we put on the whole arm of God. Lord, our loins gird about uh, with truth. Uh, our breastplate of righteousness. God Almighty, the helmet of salvation, our feet shed with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit. Come on, the word, the word, the word. Lord, we forever pray and seek your presence. We forever pray and seek your face for your glory. God, we declare the spirit of boldness every man and woman of God that we will recognize our place and our position. That we need to be in prayer and fasting and true fellowship. That we get all the isms and the schisms. We put away the petty stuff, God Almighty. This afternoon, Lord God, help us to recognize our place and our position and push back at the enemy. Right now, God, our borders has been infiltrated for too long. And so now, God, help us to arise and to shake ourselves. There was a time, God, that some had Samson lost the anointing because he played with it, God, and when he shook himself, there was no power. Power. There was nothing at all. But right now, God, we repent. Even though some of our eyes have been plucked out physically and spiritually. But I pray, oh God Almighty, that our spiritual eyes be open. Our spiritual eyes be restored. And so we can see. And like Samson, God, we ask, oh God Almighty, for strength one more time to defeat the Philistine. Strengthen us, Lord God. God, but not like him to die with the enemy. Help us to have continuous reign and victory over the enemy. Right now, God! Shaka Baba. Everything, God. Everything, Lord God. We come against that twisted communication, that reptilian spirit, the spirit of the Levitian, Lord God, the spirit of the devil himself. Oh, Shandayaba Sata, Randayaba Sata Yaba, read this house, God. You see the foundation, you see the building, you see the familiar spirit rising up things and looking. But in the name of Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth, I say, family. Spirit and Zop, Spirit of Divination and Zop, Randa Yabasanda, victory in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody say victory in the name of Jesus. We come against familiar spirits. We come against generational curses yes, and generational God. spirits. You're dead, Kiyashata. No dead among the living. Come on, people of God. Open our eyes, this our Lord God. And recognize, let us recognize what's going on. And to fight, Lord God Almighty. We thank you for the victory. Yes, Lord. Lord God, we shall overcome. We shall have the victory, Lord God. We shall overtake the enemy. And so like David, God, we're encouraging ourselves this day, God. Strengthen us again, Lord. Strengthen this house again, Lord God. Let's be slain, God.
We thank you for the holy revenge, God. As we strengthen ourselves, we're going to worship you, Lord God, because the battle belongs to you. We declare the spirit of discernment for the leadership and for everyone, God, in the house. Come on, open our eyes to your glory. Let's put away the isms and the schisms, God Almighty. Yakatanda, everything that is false. Everything that's a lie, everything that's corrupt, everything that is filthy. We put it from our lives now, God. Cleanse us, Lord God, from spiritual adultery, from idolatry. Oh, God, from every fornication, from everything of the flesh. We ask you, God, to cleanse us. Make this house whole, God. Make this crown whole for your glory. You see everything they have sent right now, God. But in the name of Jesus the Christ, we bring the curse. And we declare victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody again. Somebody shout victory in the name of Jesus. Come on, victory in the name of Jesus. He said, one shall chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight. Come on. All of us has been defeated. Hallelujah. All of us have been knocked down. But right now, God, we are rising again. Come on, tell somebody, rise again. Come on, look up, look up. We look unto the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help comes. From the Lord which made heaven and earth. Come on, thank God for the victory. Come on, lift your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody say victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am persuaded. God will see me true. I am persuaded God will see me true. I never doubt him. I only trust him. He specializes. He specializes in this. Thoughts impossible, and I am persuaded God will see me true. I am persuaded God will see me true. I never doubt Him. I only trust him. I only trust For he specializes. He specializes in things. Thought impossible. I am persuaded. God will see. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God glory. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you, but the word came for me. And everything has been declared is for me. Because I've been through, but glory be to God. I thank God for the revenge. And so I'm going to put up my defense. I'm going to open. Yo, why are we smiling so hard? Because it's another time for us to gather. Somebody type in the comments. I know his name is wonderful. Everybody right here. Hey, Miranda, this is my testimony. All of my life, I've never known you to fail. You remain the same man Wonderful is your name All of my life I've never known you to fail You remain the same man Wonderful is your name